di buta dia buku Ambilada News Network Tugenda ku intermixing Because you know our people They share the two languages Election is up down And now there are some Misconnection is in the court The other time we heard that they have dismissed to be a period led and even the brutality which was even done to the people and you yourself when you are going to UN for the Human Rights Commission or headquarters in the country. What's the way forward now? Because it seems that everything is knocking on the door. The dictators and the, the system are fighting to see that you do not achieve justice. Well, um, we are moving forward, uh, good enough for doing everything in the open after the election, which uh, was clearly the most fraudulent election that Uganda has seen. Um, we know people are angry. People want to take uh, practical action. But we, the leaders, are always guiding our people to two things. One, legal. Secondly, non-violent. And that is why we decided to go to the courts of law. Not that we trust the judges, but because we trust the law. In the same way, we went to the election. Not that we uh, trusted the ones that we were that were, were going to adjudicate the elections, but because we trust democracy. So we are testing the courts, and uh, as uh, everybody is seeing, the unveilings are for everybody to see. Olawa GMTV, the independent mind. Secondly, uh, the, the people in diaspora are eagerly to hear about you, especially if the dictator also, who is also in charge of commanding the, the courts of law, did like the way he did in, in the recent elections. What next? Um, it has always been said by us, myself and the team, that the people of Uganda will have the final say in the matters regarding their future. We are using all legal avenues and all non-violent avenues, and we shall stop at nothing to ensure that we get our freedom, to get to ensure that we get the electoral justice, which is clear for everybody to see. We proceeded to the Supreme Court, and we tasked the court, we even put the court on notice, we told them, that if it continues the way it's continuing, you know, when the Chief Justice comes around and makes statements suggesting that he has already determined the case, when the courts are acting in a very biased manner, I mean, um, I'm no expert at law, but I know that what a court decides in one case is called the doctrine of precedent, and therefore binds <coughs> Um, is, is binding the court to decide in a similar manner in, uh, uh, in cases that have uh, similar ingredients. In this case, the previous uh, election petition of 2016, I mean an amendment to the petition was accepted. Why is ours being rejected? In the 2001 and 2006 presidential election petitions, the evidence kept coming in all the way, all through the hearing. Now we've not even started the hearing, but they are blocking my evidence. Even when I made it clear that uh, I was under house arrest for 11 days out of the 15 that court gives us, that our witnesses are on the run, that they are being abducted in drones, that they are being held in military detentions. It took the court of law to free me from my house. Then why doesn't it take the court of law to deliver justice, electoral justice? So we went to the court. But again, we told the world that we're going to the court with the people of Uganda. We want this to be a litigation of public interest. And, uh, you know, if the courts don't give us the evidence, I mean, I mean, if the court does not give us the justice, we'll go to the people of Uganda. Some of your colleagues or the, your team are now being tried in the court martial. It is wrong. It is illegal. It is illegal to try civilians in a military court. 
But again, we are living, we are living under um, a military dictatorship that looks at everything as a military operation. We were in an election, but General Museveni was treating this as a military operation. That is why my team and I, up to the tune of 126 people, were rounded up by the military. That is why Nubian Lee, Eddie Mutwe, Dan Magic, and all other young men and women that I was on the campaign train trail with were taken to uh, Chitalia prison through the military court, you know. Why? Because Yenoma Seveni does not trust any civilian court. He does not trust the law. With the military, he just orders. You find a person that was arrested on a campaign trail is treated like a rebel, denied bail even when they were so badly tortured. That is the country that we're living in. But again, it continues to expose what kind of uh, brutal dictatorship that we are going through and what we must do very soon to free ourselves. Just drawing a picture from what you experienced in the campaign, what could you tell the Ugandans? Ugandans continuously see themselves that we are on our own as the people of Uganda. I was telling them when I was in parliament that they shouldn't have their hope in parliament. I told them that all institutions have been uh, you know, taken over and they're in the pocket of Museveni, the electoral commission, the police, the military, the Bank of Uganda, the Civil Aviation Authority, the courts of law, all institutions. But again, it has been like that in all dictatorships, in the Gaddafi dictatorship, in the Mugabe dictatorship, in the Bashir dictatorship, in the Mubarak dictatorship, in the Kampoare dictatorships. But they all come crumbling down to the power of the people. And that's why we continue to call upon the people of Uganda to know their power, to know their rights, and rise up to defend their rights. I can't do it alone, we have to do it together as the people of Uganda. Over 60 members of parliament are now going to be presenting you, and even others at the local government level. Have you really sent them to represent the party, or they are going to represent their interests? The members of parliament that are elected under the NUP are not there to represent the party, neither are they there to represent their interests. They are there to represent the people. We, as a party, make every effort to represent the people. But even where we might, you know, fail as a party, the leaders must know, and I tell them that right from the word go, they are accountable to the people. They are accountable to the people that voted them. That is what we stand for as the national inter-platform, servant leadership, a people-centered government. So it is for the people that they're standing for. However, I don't want us to get lost in uh, ordinary politics while we are living under a dictatorship. The parliament has been and continues to be just a rubber stamp for as long as General Museveni holds power over them. The parliament can't decide anything. I mean, it's the same parliament that was raided by the military. The courts of law are also under siege, you know. So the people must stand and put an end to a strong man rule, a one man rule. That way we will have uh, independent institutions that serve the people of Uganda according to the provisions of the law. But as of now, the law is not being followed. If the law is being followed, you wouldn't see the military beating up elected members of parliament outside the gates of the United Nations Human Rights Office. You wouldn't see that. You wouldn't see people uh, disappearing. You wouldn't see the president of the country coming on national TV and saying that uh, it is justified for people to be kidnapped and justify the wanton shooting and murdering of citizens of Uganda. So we're not living um, in a legal state, but we are struggling to ensure that we achieve one. Your last two remarks to the people of the entire world. Who are... My last remarks. One, I want them to know that their hope should not just be in me, it should be in themselves. I don't believe in that big man syndrome. I believe in all of us syndrome. I believe that my energy comes from you and therefore yours should also come from me. So don't just look at me, let's look at each other. 
and decide and act together as a people. I'm thankful for the people of Uganda, here in Uganda and abroad, especially the diaspora. The people in the diaspora facilitated our entire campaign. Many of them are helping us, you know, treat our sick uh, comrades that have been brutalized by the regime. They're helping us follow up in the legal processes of trying to uh, secure freedom for our incarcerated uh, comrades. We salute them, we respect them. We are not giving up. Ugandans must not give up. This is a generation to set free our country. We are taking it one day at a time. Every step that we take, we celebrate it, but to ensure that it propels us to the next step. We are taking every legal step, every legal step to ensure that we tick all the boxes, even though it's clear that the regime continues to expose itself. However, we are not going to give up. We know that Museveni prides himself in violence. We are going to defeat him with non-violence. So I continue to call upon all of you to do everything that you can within your ability to ensure that we weaken and ultimately dismantle the military rule, to ensure that the rule of law is regained in the Pearl of Africa, to ensure that uh, there is respect for human rights, to ensure that uh, you know we can be sure that we shall express ourselves freely and legally and non-violently, and we shall not expect any repercussions. I'm thankful to you, Dean. Thank you. Sure. Mm -hmm.